Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is the first video for chapter 3. In chapter 3, we will study second order linear equations, starting from the easiest one and going into more complicated ones. Okay, so let's get started. Let's begin with a brief introduction. So the aim of this chapter is um, second order ordinary differential equations and linear ones. So the general form of these equations could be written as following. And you have the highest derivative y double prime and y prime and y. These are um, multiplied by functions of t so that this expression is linear in y. And then there could be a term on the right hand side, we call that b of t. Okay? And these coefficients, we label them a2, a1, a0, where the number here correspond to the order of derivative of the term they are associated with. And we need some assumptions to keep the second order. This term must not vanish, so the a2t term should not be identically zero. And the equation is associated um, with the initial condition, for example. And that is at initial time t0, y is given, and also y prime at t0 is given. So this is y0 and this is y bar0 for the initial derivative. And one more term to be specified, which we will see is very important later on, is uh, this term here, b of t on the right-hand side of equation that is not involved with y. If this b of t is identically zero, then we call this equation homogeneous. Otherwise, if b of t is not identically zero, is some function, of t, then this is called non-homogeneous. Okay, so let's begin with the simplest case of second order linear equation. That is, we will look at homogeneous equations with constant coefficient. Okay, so um, what does it mean, constant coefficient? Well, that means um, these terms a2, a1, a0, they are not functions of t, but they are just numbers, so they are constants. And uh, the right hand side is 0. Okay? That means we are interested in this equation, as written here. A number a2, y double prime, plus a number a1, y prime, plus a number a0, y equals 0. Okay? So we'll just uh, um, have a taste of what kind of a solution this type of equation could get. And we will um, start that with an example. OK, so let's take our first example. So we want to solve the equation y double prime minus y equals 0. So if you want to put this in that general form we have, then we see that a2 is 1 here. And a1, the term for y prime, is not here, so 0. And then a0 for the term y is a uh, um, negative 1. Sorry, that's a typo. OK, so let's try to solve this um, intuitively without um, really knowing any um, algorithm for the problem. So let's look at the equation here. It says y double prime. If we move this y term to the right hand side, we have y double prime equals y. So um, here's the question. What type of function, if you differentiate it multiple times, you get the function back? Well, that um, reminds me of the wonderful property of the exponential function. If you would indulge me, I would like to tell this uh, funny little joke. So you know that 
um, the derivatives can be considered as an operator and these operators are called differential operators. And you know that um, usually if you apply a differential operator on a function, let's say you take a derivative of a function, it will change the function. And things are particularly dangerous if, say, you are a polynomial. Because each time when you get differentiated, you lose your power. And the more times you get differentiated, the more power you lose, right? So y equals t to the fourth, you differentiate it, you get t to the third. So when you get differentiated enough times as a polynomial, in the end, when you become a constant and you run into a differential operator, then you become zero. And uh, we say, when a function is zero, we say the function vanishes. So if you are a polynomial, you shall be very afraid of a differential operator. So being such powerful, these operators are quite a bully. So legend says one dark night in the most dangerous part of the town in an alley, a function meets a differential operator. The differential operator says you little function get out of my way or I will differentiate you over and over until you vanish. And the function replied in a calm voice, I'm e to the t. Okay, hope you get the point and enjoy that little joke. And let's go back to our example. Okay, so we see that the exponential function is very powerful. And let's put it, um, let's make a guess of the answer. One of the answer we call y1 is e to the t. And we want to verify that this satisfies the equation. So you know if you differentiate t twice, you get et. Therefore, y double prime minus y is et minus et is zero. So the exponential function is a solution. So the question is, e to the t, is that the only function that is a solution? Or can we be smart and guess another one? And what would you guess? Which function, if you differentiate it twice, you get it back? Well, um, a quick guess would be e to the negative t, right? Because if you differentiate it once, you get a negative sign. And you differentiate it again, you get another negative sign, which cancels the previous one. So you just get e to the t. And therefore, um, Again, you have y double prime equals y. So we found another solution that is e to the negative t. And this one we call y2 of t. Now, here we make a very bold claim, which is actually a very important claim. We claim that any function, we call it y, written as c1y1 plus c2y2, where c1, y, uh, c1 and the c2 are just two arbitrary constants, and uh, y1 and y2 are both solutions of the equation of a linear problem, then this y here is also a solution. And um, such an expression that is you take two functions and multiply them by constant and add them up and this form here is called a linear combination of y1 and y2. Okay let's try to verify our claim. Okay let's form our y which will be c1 e to the t plus c2 e to the negative t where c1, c2 are two arbitrary constants. Let's verify that it satisfies the equation. So now we need to compute the y derivative and the y double derivative. Okay, So differentiate this once, you get this expression where the negative sign here comes from the 
um, negative T here. And then differentiate one more time. The first one is the same because e to the t doesn't change. And for second one, we get an additional negative sign and it cancels this one. So this is exactly y. Therefore, y double prime minus y is 0. So we see that this linear combination actually satisfies the equation also. So it's a solution. So actually here we found infinitely many solutions because C1 and C2 are two arbitrary constants. Now here comes a thing that is even stronger than the claim itself. So actually this claim here we made is a rather general property for linear equations with homogeneous right hand side. Okay? This has a name. It is called the principle of superposition. Superposition means um, if you find a solution, you can add it on the existing one and make new solutions. You can keep adding up all solutions and you still have a solution. All right, so the principle of superposition is very important. So let's put it in into a theorem and then formalize it. Okay, so let's say now y1 and y2 are two solutions to this linear equation, um, homogeneous. Then you make a linear combination of them, call this y, is also a solution for this for any constant c1, c2. Okay? So we see now this is a, a much more general statement and we are putting in a, a2, a1, a0 to be functions of t. Okay, let's go through a short proof for the theorem. So since we know y1 and y2 are both solutions, then we can put it in and the solution holds. So we put in y1 this equation holds, and then if we put in y2, and this equation holds as well. Okay, and then we call the first equation 1 and the second equation 2. And now I'm going to do the following. I will multiply the first equation by c1, and then multiply the second equation by c2. Okay, so um, I wrote here, C1 is multiplied onto the first equation and C2 is onto the second one. So each term here is multiplied by that constant. Okay, and then we add up these two equations. So the first term will be C1A2, Y1 double prime, and C2A2, Y2 double prime. And we add them up. And then we see that a2 is a common factor. It takes it out. And then we have c1, y1 double prime plus c2, y2 double prime. So we can add up c1, y1 plus c2, y2 and take double prime afterwards. Okay, so this one comes from adding up these first two terms. And then you can do a similar thing for the, and the second terms taking a1 out as a common factor, and then you get c1, y1 prime, c2, y2 prime, then you put it here and as a sum and you take the derivative afterwards because you can exchange these two orders. Okay, and then the last term comes from summing over these two terms multiplied by c1 and c2 respectively, and taking out a0, and then you get that and that's zero. So this equation holds. And now you will see why we do the linear combination. So c1 y1 plus c2 y2 is the y that we had in the theorem. So let y be that. And then we see that this is just y, and this is y, and this is y. So put that in, I will get a2 y double prime plus a1 y prime plus a naught y, which is here, equals zero. 
which is exactly the equation. So this y is also a solution to this equation. Okay, so um, we have shown now that a linear combination of uh, any solutions is uh, a solution also. Okay, so keep in mind this uh, principle of superposition. It is a key point later on for us to derive general solutions for um, linear problems. Okay, so um, this is an introduction into this topic and uh, next time we will go through more examples and start introducing um, algorithms to solve them. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.